one more example to finish off Unit 5. You're like, hey, where's all the information? Well, there isn't. It's just one example, but I think when you do the example, you'll find out how this question is just a little bit different than the ones we've done in Lesson 5.4. So just like 5.4, we've got to do all those steps. We've got to find the variables, come up with the primary, secondary equation, domain, then take the derivative, and so on, so on, so forth. So try it again. The sum of two non-native numbers is 30. Find both numbers if the sum of twice the first plus the square of the second is a maximum. Okay, so very similar to the previous ones we did in 5.4, so let's quickly try to do this together. Two variables once again, right? X will be the first number. Y perhaps is the second number. We're going to look at uh, a secondary equation here, right? The sum of two negative numbers is 30, or non-negative, sorry, is 30. So x plus y equals to 30. But what are we trying to maximize or minimize here? Once again, it's the sum. The sum of twice the first plus the square of the second. All right. And once again, two variables, not fun. So we'll solve for y, perhaps. And we'll just substitute it into our primary equation. S equals to 2x plus 30 minus x all squared. You can expand this out if you want, or you can use chain rule, but I'm just going to expand this out. 900 minus 60x plus x squared. We can simplify. I'll put the x squared term in the front. All right. Oops, I totally forgot. What's the domain? So we can look at the domain. I'll just quickly write it over here. The domain for x, of course, has to be bigger than 0. But noticing if the y is as small as possible, then the x has to be as large as possible. In this case, the domain would be, yeah, you get it, 30. Okay. It does say 2 non-negative. That's why I put the equal sign here. So it could actually be 0 because 0 is non-negative. All right, so we got all this information. All right, now what? Yes, it's time to do some calculus. So we'll take the derivative, s prime, that's 2x minus 58. We'll set it equal to zero, and we'll solve, and we'll get 58 equals to 2x, or x equals to 29. Perfect. And then we're all set to do our number line. There's 29. Remember our domain once again? So from 0 all the way to 30. And then we're going to once again, yeah, test out the two different regions by plugging it into S prime. If I plug in 1, I think you'll get this region being negative. Plug in 29 and a half, you'll get this number being positive. So negative to positive, this 29 must be a minimum. Good. So if you say when x equals to 29 and y equals to what, that'll be 30 minus 29, that equals to 1, this gives you a minimum. Yeah, but, uh-oh, but, uh-oh, I didn't ask you for a minimum, this time I asked you for the maximum. Oh, no. So where would my maximum be then? We have a domain here from 0 to 30, so what should I also do? That's right, check endpoints. So I'm going to say note, x equals to 29 gives a minimum. So where is my maximum? So therefore, the maximum must occur at an endpoint. Which endpoint do we want to do? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Actually, I do know, I do, and I do know. You have to test all of them. So, plug in S, we'll plug in 0, so S of 0. And I also want you to plug in S of 30. Where's S again? S is probably this lovely equation here. So we'll plug that in, 2 times 0, plus 30 minus 0, all squared, that's 900. That seems pretty big to me. <laughs> 2 times 30 plus 30 minus 30 uh, squared, that just gives us 60. So therefore, x is 0, y must be 30, giving a maximum of 900.
So the first number is 0. And of course the second is 30. And there you have it. So make sure you read the question carefully, defining a max or a min. And also then, once again, double check your endpoints. Now, you're done.